I thought I was wasting a year of my life. It wasn't a waste. This is the way, Kim, it's gonna work. Next. You're gonna call yourself Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman? You're who? This is the season all the Breaking Bad fans, all the people who tuned in for Breaking Bad, I really believe this is the season everybody's been waiting for. And all the people in Better Call Saul who've been hoping that the show, everything starts paying off, both of those things happen in this season. I believe it's by far our best season as it should be, given how they've been building the, the tension, you know, for four years now. And I think we, personally, speaking for myself, I think the writers and the directors and the whole team have exceeded everything I wish the show could be or would be, I think it all pays off this year in a, in a huge way, and I hope people really tune, out, tune in for it. Now that Jimmy's sort of out on his own as Saul, how will Howard come into play? Do you know, like, where's Howard in this universe? Uh, you sound like my, like my agent. Where is Howard <laughs> in this universe? Um, you know, uh, to, uh, to Michael's point as well, like, you know, uh, she says that, you know, you know, John Carlo was in great Breaking Bad, and we like to make the joke, like, maybe Howard's in Breaking Bad, too. We just don't see him. Uh, just because we are, they weren't visible in Breaking Bad doesn't mean they're necessarily gone. So uh, Howard exists, you know, from last season, he went through the ringer a little bit. And uh, there's that great scene that I get to have with Bob when he comes up and basically bucks me up, you know, by saying, like, get your act together, you know? You're Howard Hamlin. What's going on with you? And... And that was a turning point for Howard's character to go ahead and actually take that to heart and be like, right, let's move on from Chuck. Let's move on from the disaster that's become HHM and, and what's going to rise like a phoenix out of that. And I think season like five explores phoenix. that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's a blue phoenix, but nonetheless, it's a phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> like Trademarked, that. of course. I like, blue I like blue phoenixes too, yeah. <laughs> and Gus also has like some secret projects going on that like um, Lalo may or may not figure out at some point, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Gus has been in a position where he's trying to strengthen his hold over the cartel and still trying to build. And it's been a fascinating thing for me to sort of a nuanced performance to be a little more vulnerable uh, in these years on Better Call Saul, guiding us to a place where you, where Gus's ferocity comes out and his power completely gets consolidated. So it's been interesting to have threats against his business and to navigate those threats. Also, what I enjoy about this particular season is we start to see the underpinnings of financing and corporate uh, involvement uh, and connection uh, with Gus and his empire. And so that is another very intricate piece of, the, of our story uh, that will be told. All of this comes out of relationship, out of informed by desire of what we want as human beings. And that's what makes Better Call Saul a really fantastic piece. You are going to love this. I made this just for you. Nunca en tu vida has probado algo tan delicioso, eh? De verdad. Mira, espérame, espérame. Te vas a morir. Muchas gracias. Lalo, he seems like a very loose cannon. How fiery is he? Like, what are we going to, you know what I mean? Like, what are we, like, how dangerous is he? <laughs> well, Lalo's played by a wonderful actor called Tony Dalton, yeah. who's, a, who's a really, really wonderful. And we all knew he was wonderful before coming in. And, and um, he's just great in the show. And it's, it's a great character because I think he is the... His, his type of character is the one thing that I think that can throw something like Gus Fring off because he is the, uh, the complete opposite. He's, he's not measured, he's unpredictable, he's not as calculating, and, and he has really, he really um, operates in a way where you feel like he's got absolutely nothing to lose, mm -hmm. which makes it very hard to deal with an opponent like that, with someone like Gus, for example, who has an empire to lose and has and everything is organized and everything has its place and i think it puts nacho in a in a really 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 impossible situation because nacho at the at the end of season four is very clear on the fact that he his super objective is to save his father and get away from the cartel and to never to, he regrets the choices he made as a teenager to get into this and um i think what happens is as his desire to leave increases he becomes um, really an incredible asset to somebody like Gus Fring which makes it really almost impossible for him to either come out alive or to get out of the cartel in the first place which puts his father's life in jeopardy which puts Nacho in a further more difficult situation. And how do you save your asset? How do you protect your asset when you own that asset? And that asset gets into a situation that is compromising, could compromise you 
uh, and could compromise the cartel as well. So there's a, there's a very fine line in a chess game being played here, um, and respectfully so, uh, that hopefully we'll be able to, to mine the juice that comes from behind the character's desire. Gus has to be looking at Nacho in a certain way uh, with a little bit of respect because his intention a is A little? Good. Just a little? <laughs> <laughs> That's my love for you. You, you, you notice how he had to, he, he whispered on that, well, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I, think, I think the relationship between Gus and Nacho this year is, is really, really, really beautiful and come to fruition in, in so many ways because of the complexity of it. They're both, they're men that are both driven by the, the, you know, Gus is driven by the, the desire to save the, the memory of someone he loves that was killed by the cartel. And Nacho's desire is really to save someone who can be killed by the cartel. And it's so interesting because they have the exact, the, the heart is the same in the sense that they, they're both driven by the love for that one person, but it actually puts them on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Welcome to my world Won't you come on in?